Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Doom Tomb Podcast, the podcast for all things stoner, doom, and sludge. My name is Chris. I am your host, and today we have the return of Shane, the one man, all live, no loop, doomy, sludgy goodness of a band via vengeance. This is going to be a long one. Let's get into it right now. Okay, we are back for round two with Shane from Via Vengeance. Shane, how you doing today, brother? Going great, Chris. How are you? Awesome, man. Now, for those that don't know, we interviewed Shane a while back. Um, he had two releases through Via Vengeance. That is episode 45. So go back and listen to that. We'll get a little more of the history of this man at done at In and Out Burger yeah. <laughs> right after a show at the Rebel Lounge in Phoenix, Arizona. But today we are going to uh, talk a little bit about a few different things. One of the most important things: uh, distractions from the truth. Latest album from Via Vengeance, and we're going to get into a few other things. One of the things, if you don't mind me kicking this off right away, yeah. Uh, so I was I was going down in a YouTube uh, hole, rabbit hole, yeah. and I saw a show that you did at a place that I guess doesn't exist anymore, the Clubhouse. Yes. With Helmet. Yes. We talked about it in the previous yes. episode. And uh, also I saw a marquee theater performance. Who was that with? That was... Uh... That was with Black Dahlia Murder. Oh, really? Yeah. And there are some benefits to being a one-man band. Right. Because that's how that happened. Sure. Uh, it was actually, it was about 3 o'clock. It may have been a Monday or Tuesday. It was in the afternoon. I got a text from a promoter there, and he, or he called me, and he goes, hey, uh, what are you doing tonight? And I go, no, no plans. He goes, you want to open for Black Dahlia Murder? I said, sure. Yeah. And at that point, I had probably only played maybe 10 shows. So <laughs> to be on that stage. Yeah. How, how, how does it feel? Because I've seen, I've seen Via play at, at different, uh, different spots. I've never seen it at something at like the Marquee. How did it feel as a one-man band playing at the Marquee versus other spots like Yucca Tap or Time Out or whatever? It was, it was cool. A lot of it, I mean being the opener what had happened is the opening band canceled right and so the promoter said if you can be here in two hours you can play and it's probably 800 people you know nice which was was great and uh the thing about that is everyone there is helping you because they're on a time crunch right so there was no really no time to think about anything so. sure that was a fun show. And it took uh, you probably a full five minutes to get off stage <laughs> with yeah. everybody helping you. I mean, exactly. Geez, you're grabbing everything. Yeah, so it was fun. Now, with all that, yes, I, I saw something, and I'm wondering if you're going to bring it back. I know uh, if you listen to the previous episode, 45, we talked a lot about the owl and yeah. what that symbolizes. The, I, and I saw at these shows, you used to have one on stage. Oh, yeah. Are you ever planning on bringing that back? You know, it's for the first uh, shoot, probably the first six, seven, probably first six years, I would always have it. Right. And I remember one time I thought I forgot it and I was like, oh no, uh, where's, where's my other bandmate? Right. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. And you get so yeah, used to it. Yeah. And uh, it's funny too, it, there's certain photos one particular I remember in like 2010 I was playing in Seattle and some guy took a photo and he captured the like the owl was on my base head and we were almost like looking at each other it was, it was nice. pretty it, it's kind of a random pick but yeah it's uh I may have to bring him back maybe I'd like to see yeah. it I'm just throwing it out you there you know what 
Planet Mammoth. <laughs> oh! I am going to to bring it. That is something yeah. I need to see. Yeah. All right, fantastic. There, there and it is. If people aren't uh, sure, hey, if you're in Arizona, you haven't gotten your ass to some tickets, Planet Mammoth 2020, there's going to be an amazing amount of bands. I think we're up to 24 now. Three days worth in February. Via Vengeance is on it. You're not going to want to miss it because you will be playing some stuff off the new album, right? Yeah, definitely. Good, because I, I saw the... Uh, the release show uh, and and previous shows before that where you were kind of saying, oh, I got a new song, I got another song, I got another song. And I got to, and we'll get into the record in a little bit, but I just got to say, man, it's like hearing it live, I knew I liked it. You sent me some raw tracks before the, the album was released, and I was like, dude, this is like next level. It, it's, it's such a jump. Um, I mean, a lot of it, it... it I don't know if it's time or whatever, but it, you've just created something fantastic. Well, and we'll get we'll get to that in a minute. Thank you. Um, but um, well, you know what? Let me think about this for a second because we had about what was it like a about a three and a half year gap between records. Actually, longer than that, which is funny. Well, and because I'll, and I'll tell you. Okay, or, go or ahead. Gap is. I'm sorry. Yeah, gap from uh, release, but yeah. recording there was a longer gap, which I'll go into that with you. I think we talked about it before. With, with you recorded it and then didn't, didn't put it out for a bit. Years, yeah. 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 So okay, so not only from um, harsh conditions, but from the previous recording. To now with distractions, uh, what do you feel changed? Well, so a lot has has happened and changed because I mean I recorded the very first Via record in two thousand seven, right? Uh, Diography, and that was I was kind of just figuring it out then and kind of testing the waters and uh so what what is what has changed is in 2011 i started taking drum lessons right from uh from a guy who became a a guy named brett Fredrickson, who became a, a good friend of mine as well and he really helped helped me a lot he taught me how to read music which is something i fought and i was like i i just want to learn you know i just want to learn how to play better he goes yeah but if i show you how to read then you'll have that forever and and it he was right and uh so i'm enjoying uh i enjoyed those but that he really helped me get to kind of that next level of things and uh and it's funny because going taking a lesson and it, it took a while for me to look back and realize that it was helping. Right. You know? Um, but, uh, so that's definitely one thing that changed is, is I, I started taking drum lessons and then, uh, I had quit drinking in 2009 or 10. So a little more clear headed. So that, that's definitely something that's, that has changed. And, uh, just playing in in different with different bands and being around different creative musicians right little things just kind of stick here and there and i don't know i think it's just i love i love playing music and being around music and watching live music and listening to music so it's it's a big part of my life in, in all genres so i'm that that has i feel like has all Getting older and uh, sure, you know, and appreciating things a little more than I once did. And I know that uh, this this album we have uh, um, from uh, uh, it's in remembrance of Brett. Yeah, um, I know he passed away recently. I'm sorry. Um, okay. Is there any ever time when you're playing something, uh, especially on the new record? Where you're like, I wouldn't have played this if it wasn't for him. Oh yeah, I mean some of the some of the lyrics stemmed from that. So Brett actually he passed away in January of nineteen. So it's coming yeah. up on a year toward, towards the end of the month, and he had 
he had passed away uh, basically unexpectedly. Right. Um, and I mean, this is kind of interesting because uh, in December of 18, I went to Europe and, and right. I, we haven't talked about, I just, this, this will kind of tie in and I was leaving my lesson and he gave me a hug. Yeah. Right. And I was like, he goes kick ass over there, you know? And I was like, I was, and, and we had never, ever hugged, you know, it's, it's not like when you see, yeah, yeah. it's more of like, you know, he's my drum teacher, but we were friends, but we weren't, you know, but it'll tie in. So he gave me a hug and he's all be safe over there. Kick ass. And I came back and I did, I think one more lesson and he goes, Hey, uh, he goes, I got that, uh, that hernia surgery coming up. So, uh, I can't do next week, but we'll do the following. And I was like, okay, cool. And he, he had like four other students. So I just gave him a wave goodbye. Right. And that was the last time I saw him. Whoa. So it's interesting. He gives me a hug when I'm traveling overseas yeah and thinking that something may happen to me right and then he goes in for a hernia surgery and it leads to a blood clot and really he, and he and he dies unexpectedly at 55 years old wow too soon and, and Way too so soon. he had passed and then i had the uh i had the recording session already booked for the following week right so i had a lot uh, you know that I had a lot of lyric some a lot of some of the lyrics came from 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 uh the new record yeah because I hadn't uh, re- lyrics are always uh what I finalized last so yeah there's definitely t- going back to your co- to your uh question yeah there's there's a few moments in there where where he always pops in you know and I think about him often actually just just came across I was watching a video on YouTube uh, a couple nights ago, and his drumming website popped up on the YouTube video. No kidding. Yeah, and that blew me away, so I don't know if that's... It was weird, but it, huh. brought, it, it took me to his site and, you know, went, did a trip down memory lane, so... Rest in peace, Brett Fredrickson. Yeah, and he's probably watching. He'll he'll he'll, he'll hear this and in, yeah. in one way or another. But we'll move on to something maybe a little bit uh, a little bit happier. Yeah. Um, I know over the past year, I I, I saw I wanted to go to the monolith oh, on yeah. the mesa. Um, obviously, I wasn't going to make that France trip. That ain't gonna happen. <laughs> but but this monolith thing. Uh, Roman puts it on, yes. loved it. That sounded like that was one killer, killer time. It was badass. And the France trip, though. Yes. We, we talked about it a little bit in, uh, in a previous interview with Surf Through Death, your, your, one, of your, one of your many other projects. <laughs> but the France trip, like, so you, you, you talked previously about the crowd, how it's diversified, but it's all unified. Yes. Um, what else did you, what else... Like, were you getting music-wise over there? Like, what's hot? You know, everything's hot over there. Yeah? Like, it really is. I mean, one of the guy who closed out the show was a DJ. And it was, like, one of the heaviest DJs. I didn't even know this exists. Exists. I can't even describe it. Right. It's kind of hard to even describe. But Thick? It was, yeah. Heavy, and, and, yeah. And it was, like... Here you have all these different. So you may be familiar with this guy. Uh, he's he's probably one of the biggest one man bands out right now, okay. because of YouTube. Right, his video it's Mr. Marcelli, and he plays the two bass drums, no shirt, and he plays the cello. Uh, I think I've seen that. Yeah. yeah, I think we might have even talked about him. I think. Yeah. So that's that. He was the, you know, he, he was the big, big, uh, uh, Oh no, no. You know what it was? I apologize. I apologize for interrupting. I, I remember you were telling me that he was going to be there. I don't remember whether it was on mic or off mic. And then, uh, I went and checked it out. Yeah. That was what it was. Yeah. 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 Cause he doesn't wear a shirt. Yeah. He doesn't wear yeah. a shirt. Yeah. It's, it's coming back. Odd that I had guys take off a shirt for me to remember him, <laughs> but yes, yes. 
No, he was super cool. We actually, we traded merch. We traded shirt, a shirt for a shirt and a CD for a CD. But we couldn't really understand each other. So it was like, really? yeah. So it was, it was really cool. It was a real cool experience. I'm bummed it was only two shows total. But right. It was nice because I was able to bring the wife with. and uh, Yeah, you could see the sights. Yeah. It was really cool. So All right, all right. But uh, yeah, it, definitely everyone open arms there. And it doesn't matter if you go on, if you're the first band or the last band. Right. Everyone stays. Nice. Everyone watches. Right. No one crosses their arms mm-hmm. when they're watching you. They're hungry for music. How do we get that here? What's, what's the disconnect? I don't know. I wish I knew, dude. I, I wish I knew. I, I, you know, uh, I see it. And there are days, like there was a band that came through here recently. Um, they've been around for probably a decade now. And I'm like, I, got, I better get my ticket. This is going to sell out. And it was over at Yucca Tap Room in Tempe. And it was on a school night, so it was on a Monday night. And I'm like, it doesn't matter, school night, man. I've, I've seen Mothership there and sell out the place on a, on a Monday night or whatever. And um, I got there, and it was like, I was one of two people. Wow. And I'm like, well, more, I, you know. I'm, it's early. I mean, it's early. I, I'm, I'm just guessing. It's early. It's early. But they, they, they had an opener that, like with your thing at the marquee, maybe like just a few hours before. And uh, odd opener, but uh, either way, um, th- no one came, and I felt terrible for these guys. Like, I just want to buy merch, just support and whatever. And I wanted their their, uh, their latest album, but uh, he says, "Ah, oh, whatever." You know, I I I did okay. We did okay, and you know, we've been to enough shows that it doesn't doesn't always work. And I just wish I knew what the disconnect was because this is a phenomenal live band. Uh, doomy sludginess and been around for a long time yeah. and like there's a part of me I, I, I you know I want to tell people sometimes in in the area or whatever it's like if you guys don't go to the shows nobody's going to come back you know and I've seen things at Club Red which is not far from us uh, you see a, a 475 capacity whatever the the other one is uh, six, six, almost 700 or whatever. And you see like 30 people there. Yeah. It's like, where the fuck is everybody? I know there's no big ass show going on. Yeah. I can understand like, you know, Iron Maiden came through and I'm like, oh, okay, well, you know, you're going to get a light crowd. Yeah. But if there's nothing else going on, like, where the fuck are you? Like, yeah. just go to the shows, people, for love of God. Uh, all right. I'm sorry. Let me get off my soapbox. So we were, Stepping we were down. touching on monolith. Yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. So monolith on the Mesa. What yeah. can you tell me about? Cause you, you did dual, du- dual duty. Did double with- duty on that. Yeah. Well, it was cool. Lo- luckily uh, I did the via set on f- Friday. Right. And the source set on Saturday. And yeah, it was really, really cool. I mean, Taos, New Mexico is phenomenal. I had never been through there. Yeah. And uh, it was cool because we camped. We got to bring our tents and set up camp. And So is that what happens? Is everybody camps out? Yeah. All right. So basically what you're telling me, if I go there, I have to bring a tent. Or a camper or... Yeah, I don't have that. <laughs> no, I'm not getting a, an Airstream anytime yeah. soon, dude. So I could bring yeah. a tent. You bring a tent. Yeah. Uh, is there an electrical outlet for my CPAP machine somewhere? I can... Uh, am I going to... No? You may have to rent. They have little... Uh, the, you can rent little trailers there. Like Ooh. Yeah. So. I saw you had something scheduled. I got to call them yeah. and see what's up because that lineup last year was killer. Uh, this, this year is destructive yeah uh was there anybody you saw there that you were like blown away by yeah so i mean you know uh i had seen i had seen most of the bands there live uh previously but being out there in that environment right it, it was with the light show something special yeah 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 and uh 
you know, seeing woven hand play and the sun's the sun's just kind of coming down. That nice. Was, that was killer. Um, I got to see them with Ohm a couple months ago. Wow. I, I have to admit, I didn't know what to expect because yeah. I've always heard the name. And early on, I was getting it mixed with Wind Hand. Two different bands. Oh yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. But I was like, I was like, all right, let me. You know what? I, I, there was a part of me that wanted to listen. I was like, no, let me go live and let me just hear it. Yeah, I loved it. It was very, very different, very unique. I'm so glad because Ohm headline. I'm so glad they bought them out. Oh, yeah. uh, on the tour. Well, and that, I mean, the singer of Woven Hand, singer guitarist, he has a and I may have talked to you about this before, he has a, a band, the first, I don't know if it was the first band, but a band that he was in prior to that was a band called 16 Horsepower. Yes. And so, you know, he has kind of a cult following. Right, right. And, and if you notice, he plays with a lot of heavy bands. Yeah. And it works. Somehow. It somehow works. And it's... Like seeing them live is an experience you can't even describe, right? Until you see it, yeah. So you yeah. enjoyed it. I did. Yeah. I did thoroughly enjoy it. I, I wasn't expecting, aside from him, I wasn't expecting the drums to be as bombastic as they were. I did not expect that at all, oh, yeah. and that was welcoming to me. I, 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 I don't know. You know, every once in a while, you go to a show and. You don't know what to expect, and you know, depending on your emotion, sometimes. Well, I felt it, or I didn't feel it. I was feeling it that night, and you know, just looking around at the crowd. This was at the Nile Theater in Mesa. The crowd was vibing. The, the, everybody was vibing. Especially, I mean, Ohm, that's next level. But Woven Hand Man, people were like, oh, "Man, that was that was a great set. Couldn't believe it." Yeah. Not not the, you know, yeah, it was a good set. Let me just say that. Was that show at Club Red? No, it was at the Nile. Nile Theater in uh, in downtown Mesa. So that was I know I know they came through again and they played Club Club Red. Well, they, the one at the Nile. Yeah, I'm trying to blink cuz I I saw Woven Hand at the Nile and at Club Red. Right. I know Woven Hand came through again and I missed them. Yeah, oh, they they played the same night that we had the Source release show. Then that's why I wasn't there. <laughs> and Amigo the Devil played the same night. Yeah, Nile. Yeah. So there was like five killer shows. I know, that, and that you know what? Day. I know where I wanted to show my allegiance, <laughs> and I showed up, man. We appreciate it. That was a great fucking night, and it also uh, got to make some uh, new friends with the guys in Sonoran. Yes. Um, that was their first show. They freaking crushed it. Now, by the time this comes out, I don't know if I'm overstepping. I think they're going to be playing again real soon with maybe Year of the Cobra. Just saying. Just oh, throwing it out there. Cool. So if anybody's in the, um, in the Arizona area and looking for some heavy doom, we got a doom week coming up in February. That's oh, yeah. It ain't, it ain't going to be something you want to miss. <laughs> but let's get... All right. Here's okay. So enough of this business. Enough of this. So monolith Let, ruled. Yes, monolith ruled. France was killer. Yeah. And let's get into this. Let's get into this uh, distraction, shall we say? Yeah. From the truth. So <sighs> the sound. Matt Bales. Yes. Killer bands that he's worked with. Oh yeah. How do you feel that that helped the record? Having him. Well, I mean, he's, I had been, so it helped a lot because in ways I, I was a little more prepared and in ways I wasn't. And, uh, we did, I was sending him some, some ideas. He really helped me with, he threw out some ideas. He kind of, he, he helped produce it. So, so that, right. that's kind of the, the biggest thing with the other record. He didn't really have a whole lot to say. He just kind of let me record my and do my thing. Okay. But he really, we, we did some, uh, we had a lot of conversations back and forth prior to me coming. And that really, really helped. He was a little more involved with, with 
shooting ideas and structures and like, like, Oh, well that's a killer intro. Or what if, what if that was, you know, what if we made that the intro? So he really, he was in more involved with this record. Right. And that's why I go to him. I love working with the guy, you know, it's, I, I see why. I mean, I can't tell when I, I, and again, I know I'm blowing smoke, but it's like, when I heard those first tracks that you sent me, I'm like, I don't know what you what you're hitting, brother, <laughs> but it's firing on all cylinders and it just sounds amazing. Thanks the production lot. on this was sick. Uh, if if any of you out there have not picked up this this release yet, please do so. Head over to Bandcamp or you have a regular Via Vengeance website. Yep, viavengeance.com. And I mean, you know, clearly I need to sell them. I, I'm looking <laughs> at them right now. There's a couple here that we need to get rid of. Uh, and not yeah. not because we want to get rid of them, but we want people to have the best music possible. So, <laughs> okay, so now we got the sound down. Yeah. Now the photography. Now you've worked with Josh before. Oh yeah. On uh, one of the source releases. Yeah. Now and he's been all over the place. Whether it was uh, Neurosis, Soundgarden. Yeah. I mean, how'd you hook up with him? I don't even know if I ever mentioned that. I don't think we've really gotten into this. Well, I think we did on the last episode. So Josh and I went to the same high school, which, so Josh and Mike from Surf Through Death, who who was just here, uh, they were the same year. And um, long story short, Josh and I knew each other in high school, but we never really hung out a lot. Right. And then we got reconnected in like probably 96 or 97. And uh, he he basically just moved to L.A. and started doing a bunch of – he started working with Neurosis. Yeah. And then he started uh, – him and a few guys started that instrumental band called the Red Sparrows. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, he was a founding member of that. Yep. And uh <clears throat> and so he just that was his that's what he does and so I've always not only is he a very good friend of mine I love his art and just to he he's done he's done the art for all three Via records. Yeah. Yeah, you know, and then and and then the the first source record he did the art for too. But it is such incredible so, stuff. Now um for this release, the 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 main I'm looking I'm looking behind you right there. There's a nun behind you. Oh yeah. <laughs> um, That's so, funny. what's the? Is, is there something you want to share about? Like, what's the impetus for this piece of work? Or does he have so, one? Or is it between you and it's, him? It's kind of like. So okay the the logo which the yeah. the, the shirt you love it you have from from years ago. That was kind of like in a weird way that was kind of the start of of the art in a sense or at least the newer art i i was had kind of been using the same logo for years, and I just said hey i would really like you to do a new logo and at the time, Chris Cornell from Soundgarden was alive, and he had had just done Chris Cornell's solo record right. And if you go back and you look at the logo that he did for Chris Cornell, yeah. I, I referenced that. I said, I love the simplicity of the logo you did for Chris Cornell. Mm-hmm. So if you could, you know, and obviously, you know, you know, my uh, history with owls and you just kind of, I kind of gave him those two things and he came up with that and, Boom. and that was that. And it was just simple, just his attention to detail is is just phenomenal. And, uh, and, uh, so that was the start of that. So what he did is he had an idea and with him doing the art, I always send him all the lyrics, right. You know, and the music to flesh and, out the vision. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And, uh, we had one idea that he had, had thrown my way, which I, I was interested in it. Uh, like I was like, "Oh, that sounds cool." Is there was going to be a like a woman coming out of a grave, mm-hmm. and then with a, a shark like coming. Back. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> yeah. And and 
<laughs> and I was like, I like it, you know? And I mean, it didn't go that route for whatever reason. Right. I, uh, I'm 100% stoked with what he did. So As well you should be by, and we'll, we'll get into the, I think there's something in the lyrical content that, puts that illustration across or the photograph it's not an illustration yeah. photograph puts that yeah. photograph across and i know that we will get to that maybe we should just go into it now and then i'm thinking about it let's see what we got here let me turn yeah. the page here so if you mind if you don't mind let's go uh let's go through some of the tracks yeah what do you think so let me ask you first before because i know that you said that uh the loss of brett might have had some influence on the lyrics is there anything in the uh, the lyrics that um, are you tackling anything regarding deadly sins? I don't know if I heard it or not. It, I, I kind of feel like I'm hearing some, and we'll go into it, but like yeah. greed, sloth, you know, envy, and I don't know. Maybe I'm reaching on it. I, I'm not quite sure. And that's what is. What I personally love about music that I listen to, right, is you take from it whatever whatever you almost think you need or want to hear, right. right? You can take like one word, and even if you can't make it out, you're like, oh, you know. And so that's the beauty of music. But you know, there's it's all over the place, and I'm I like to have a lot of mixed signals with lyrics. Sure, I'm not by any means a lyricist i just basically i come up if i hear something or see something or think of something that sticks out i write it down right right and and it could be one word or it could be a few words and then i kind of just it's there you know Mm -hmm. and then i come back to it uh that's that's always the what takes the longest is finalizing vocals for me. So sometimes it's a matter of the mood that the music makes me feel. Exactly, you know, yeah. And then that'll kind of be a starting point. So, I mean, I am a drummer that somehow just kind of makes figures this out because <laughs> really I, and, and I'm not I'm, that's straight up truth fair enough <laughs> yeah I just right. kind of you know make it work and then you know I kind of run it by run it by the wife or run it by you know a couple people does she listen to this music yes and no I mean right. she's I mean <laughs> Yeah, she didn't even come out to the shows in Europe, which I don't blame her because it was it was pretty brutal. And I mean, she's was there was there amazing. a pit by any chance? Uh the at the France show there were people moving around. Yeah, yeah. it was cool. Stop, yeah. See, for 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 your music, I could I could see that. Yeah, I could see that. It's not it's not it's not like a fast pit either. There's a but there's a lot of movement going on. Yeah, a lot of chunky th- movements. Yeah. All right, so the way, let's get into it here. Yeah, but you're uh, you're kind of yeah, so like there's definitely you can tell just by the this the track titles and then some of the stuff that you can understand. Yeah, it's kind of all over the place. Well, let's start uh beneath the root. Yeah. I mean, right out the gate, no hesitation, just boom. Throwing it down this uh idea maybe that uh money ain't all it's cracked up to be. Um what can you tell me about that track? Yeah, I mean, it's it has a lot to that so that um I first got the uh basis of that from did you see the movie Chappaquiddick? Yeah. Yeah. So that's where it when uh, my wife and I went and saw it, we were walking out and uh just like, not to get political, but going back to, it's just like going back to the title, Distractions from the Truth. Right. Like, what's really, what's, what's really, really happening? happening? I, you know what, God, I tell you, man, <laughs> and I, I know we don't, we don't normally, we don't do a whole lot of policy, and I ain't going to get into it, yeah. but there's a lot of crazy shit going on. And there is a point, um, I don't know if you feel this, where it's like, uh, the past few years, like 
my eyes have been like a lot wider and it's a lot broader than just this and uh we ain't gonna talk about it we're off mic maybe but um and I've been seeing some stuff and it just makes me kind of wonder a little bit you know like the old school things that make you go hmm, hmm. and what it, I'm not quite sure so yeah. okay so so is that where is that's, that that's kind of where it kind of got the start and then years of destruction can we construct it right you know that even ties into some of the destruction I made years ago you know it, so it just there's it that's the thing with this getting getting uh, this stuff out, but it can it has it has multiple meanings depending on you know where you are and who and who and wants to listen. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's go on to the second track, which is yeah. uh, deep down in, and I got this like. Let's get to the heart of the matter now. We've got. I, I've got some, or we all do, some deep-seated issues that are not resolved. And until they're resolved, the problem's going to remain. That's what I get out of that. Yeah, I mean, and even on kind of that talking section, what goes down must come out. You know, yep. It's like, yeah, you can, you can uh, hold stuff in, but only for so long. Yeah. You know? And that's, that's us. That's the big wigs who uh, I don't know how they sleep at night. I don't know either. I heard a story today, uh, curl your toes kind of stuff. I, I can't even say it on the mic. I have to tell you off mic. Cause I was like, I was shocked at what I was hearing. And uh, this person mentioned this story that uh, I know I'm being real cryptic about it, but uh, it was so like, well, of course it is. But I just couldn't, I still have a trouble like, but is it really? It is. It is this. Either way. <laughs> make, make a note to, oh, to tell I, me after. I won't forget because yeah. it, was, it was probably the most interesting conversation, <laughs> other than this, of course, uh, that, we've had, that I might have had all day. Um, so what can you tell me about Curse? I'm getting uh, in Curse that there's still this internal struggle that we're, that don't know if we're fighting for clarity or figure out what we're fighting for. I, I don't even know. What, what can you tell me about it? That's you're, you're, you're on the right track there. Yeah. It's just like, which the, the main chorus, what's right, what's wrong. It's like, and it's, man. it's a great fucking chorus, man. <laughs> I, 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 I know, I know I, when I love some stuff, I mentioned it before when I go around, uh, the house singing it when I'm at my job and I got to change some sheets and I, I'm, you know, what's right? What? <laughs> it's like, like, everybody thinks I'm a fucking maniac. <laughs> it's like, but, but I just got, I got to, you know, I got to say it enough times until it's out of my system. And for some songs, it just never happens. It, it just stays in with me. Uh, it, it, that is a great track. That's one of Thank the first you. tracks that uh, that you sent over to me. Uh, yeah. And I, I was just like, holy shit, it's so fucking good. Uh, thank you. That, that was a fun one. The, this record was challenging and fun. And it's, I mean, I'm still learning how to really play these because like, I, I did step out of my comfort zone. And, there are know, some that I and, hear, like, I'm like, I wonder how you're going to, you know, certain tracks, like, how's this going to come across live? Because yeah. I don't, some of these tracks I know I haven't heard live yet. Yeah, yeah, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm going to definitely, I need to get to work for uh, for the next, for uh, the festival. So. Right on. But, All right. Uh, but yeah, and I, I don't know if you happen to pick up on that. I, on that song, I went back to the roots of the early via stuff yes because that's that's the real like just the ride symbol mm -hmm. you know, there's da, no, da, there's da, no da, like yeah. it's more kind of upbeat and it, it, it was fun so. i like that with this album though because um whether it's uh whether it's the 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 interludes uh whether it's calm or 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 uh, moments it's just like uh you went a little slower on some of these tracks than I've heard before, um, and given it's a, a, just a, a just a beautiful amount of space. 
Um, so, and w- while we're here, let's. Th- this isn't one of those songs, though. Uh, <laughs> uh, haunt. Yeah. Um, I just wrote down. You're not alone in the cause uh, for betterment to better yourself. Uh, you're not the only one out there. There's more of a. There's more like us. More like you. More like me. And uh, maybe we. Maybe hopefully we can find those people someday. Um, closer. Where are we at? Yes and no. Yeah. Okay. Like you, like that, and that's again what I love is that's what. That's, that's what, what I got, got out, of, out it, yeah. of it. And I mean, but it could also be being haunted by a ghost. You're not alone. Oh, I see what you did there. Damn it! All right, I tried. But okay. there, but there, but you. There's truth to that too. So yeah. Again, okay. That's. Uh, it's an open to interpretation. Exactly. Now, and I, and I, I. I ask anybody, hey, you listen to these tracks yourself. You tell me what you heard. I would love to hear it as well. And you could also, I'm sure, tell Shane. I'm sure he'd love yeah. to hear it. No, I'll have a conversation. You know. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, so calm. We have a little. Yeah, it's funny because <laughs> these pieces of this record were written over the, like, from 2010. Yeah, just and and I got got some time to write. This, got, this is like tool writing time. Well, no, but again, it, it I didn't even know I was think I would ever do another record, and you know, just, really, yeah, I just I kind of put it away for a bit, and and but how calm came about that was actually when I'm working on guitar stuff, I kind of like. The cre- I like to, to make kind of creepy, mm-hmm. creepy tones and noises with it, you know, just, sure. and kind of just have fun with it. Cause I really am truly not a guitarist. And, I, <laughs> and, and so it, it's like, if I hear something that kind of has a, that, uh, that feels kind of right to me, whether it's right or wrong, right. I, uh, <laughs> I just kind of, kind of run with it. And so that was actually, I was doing that as an intro into Dead in the Snow. Right. Oh, yeah. all right. So now, I mean, I don't know. If yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. I could see that now. All right, all right, all right. That's it. Oh, that's yeah. a good. That's and, and I felt like it was just a good spot for it, especially mm-hmm. right out of the gate. Those those first three a couple bangers yeah, and just to kind of like and then and then calm. Calm yep. it down a little bit. Take your breath. Mm-hmm. Evil below the sea. Um, you know, I just um, where what I have there. I can't read what I can't read. What I fucking I'm curious wrote. Curious what your thoughts are on that. Well, I I was just uh, I I can't read. I literally can't read what the fuck that one <laughs> word is. Uh, I don't you know. Want me to take a stab at it? I, no, I, you're not going to know. Uh, okay, Let's what is, what is this word? What is that? This word right that no, no this one right here slows slows down oh goddamn you're right all right uh so it slows a little slowed down uh what I got is dragged under uh like gasping for air like maybe something else is holding somebody down well so the the thing with that that's I don't know if you if you had uh, picked up on this but that's the first true instrumental song i've ever i've ever done yeah on that yeah which is i mean other than interludes but yeah, yeah that's that song was a couple friends of mine actually it was right when i started jamming with tanner in the early stages of source right uh he my friends did this thing it was called the 24 hour song challenge and what you have to do is you have to write a song and send it to them okay within 24 hours okay and so there there's actually lyrics to that initially and I'll send you the track if you want to hear it sure where it was you know stemmed from right with literally 24 hours to to write a song oh that's great and uh so what they do is in the it's a 24 hour song challenge and they give you one vocal line. Okay. And it was very evil below the sea. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so 
I put lyrics to it other than that. And in the studio, I wasn't feeling it. I could not get back to that point. You know, and that was like probably 2012 when I wrote that. Okay. And so I said, you know what? I've never done an instrumental. Right. And th- this is an instrumental. And that it's was time. It, it just boom. So that was that. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting. So that's kind of how that. But yeah, it's. It's it. It lead. I placed it there for a reason. Mm-hmm. Leading into the next song. Right. 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 So. <coughs> Agony. Agony. Oh, I might have to break for water. Uh, do you have any water? Yeah. Man? All right. Hold on a second. Let me, let me just take a quick break. Hold on. I got to get some water. Oh, thank you so much. I was about to cough my head off, as everybody can <clears throat> almost tell. You know, and <laughs> it's so funny when I, so I open up this, I open up this water, right? And I, I felt like I, for a minute, because I'm with you, like I'm grabbing it the way you, I see you grab water when you're on stage. It's like you're either going to drink it or you're going to swallow the entire plastic <laughs> bottle. There's such it. There's such, and I I don't know whether it's because of the music that's being played at the time. It's such a forceful drink, and it's like <laughs> la, 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 la. like it's like guzzling water. I I don't know why. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to be yeah. being rude about it, but. Like I just, I just thought about that. I was like, I grabbed it just like he did. I almost uh, <laughs> all the water just almost came out. Hold on one second here. Mm. Mm. A lot of times delicious. I'm holding the, a note with right. one hand and grabbing a drink of water. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you that's, can't sip that's it. My only chance, in a sense. I'm wondering, um, maybe we should get you a straw. <laughs> <laughs> maybe it'll make it easier for you. <laughs> All right. So anyway, we we were we were starting to talk about agony. Um, you know what? I wonder because I felt loss uh, in this uh, death and uh, the continuation of life. Is this something that was uh, uh, where you had um, you had Brett in mind? Yes and no. The the actual gasping for air. Right. Uh, the, the the guitar and that vocal line, believe it or not, just one night uh, my wife was making pasta. And right. I said, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go work on songs for like ten minutes. And, okay. And that came out, and so I just really? I recorded it, and it's literally just I'm, I'm I'm kind of like just having an idea that I save, and then. So that was the start of it. But then when Brad had passed and I, and I was flying back to do vocals, right? I'll tell you about that. I, it was actually two trips to Seattle for that record. So, yeah, I remember, uh, I remember that, yeah. Yeah, so when I was flying back, I was re-listening to the, the music of it and trying out some different stuff. Right. Um, another thing, I don't know if, like, with, with that song, that was something... Another thing I did different on that, there's no cymbals on that at all. Yeah. And it's just, it's bass, snare, and mm-hmm. guitar. And it's, there's a lot of space in it. You know, I love, I do, and, and that's one thing that I said, like I, I've noticed in the difference between uh, harsh and extraction. Yeah, there's, there, there is some more space. Um, tasteful, clean, you know, yeah. biting. Uh, which I I just I don't know man I, I I blow smoke up your ass all day about this track I, I this this album I love it so much Thanks a lot. Uh, it means a lot I, I I really it was it was challenging and I I wanted to wanted to try like I tried to not cut one corner on the record right I mean from so I and, I, I I really I had a lot of fun I think this was. This may have been one of the funnest, funnest records out of the three that I've done, and two of them being with Matt. So right, uh, well, yeah, and well, that's going to move us on to Sin. Um, I don't know if you meant this or not, but the guitar in this actually sounds sinful. I, I don't know how interesting else to put that. It just it sounded not dirty but 
it 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 just it borderline sounded like just there's sin about to happen. I appreciate that because that was yeah, it was just and that was that was a song that was kind of pieced together. So the end of that song, right? And the beginning of what's the next? Oak two. Yeah. The the end of Sin and the beginning of Oak Two mm-hmm. was a whole nother song that Nate Garrett from Spirit of Drift yeah. recorded. Really? He recorded that song for me. Or he recorded and I'll send you that version so you can kind of hear Get where the he started yeah. from, yeah. And uh, he was at the conservatory, and he had, I had played with Yob at the Rogue years ago. This may have been before you moved here. It was. It had yeah, to be yeah. Yob, Yob at the Rogue. At Rogue yeah. Damn. Yeah. And it, yeah. That was a crazy show. I and, bet. Uh, and Nate was there, and he had. Uh, we had, had met there, but he was still living in Arkansas. Long story short, he moved back, or he moved here, and he was going to the conservatory, and he needed to do a final project. Right. So he said, hey, do you want to come in and do a song? And I did. And uh, and so that's what it, came, it, yeah. I didn't, for whatever reason, I didn't like the way the that I was performing the song when I went to record this record, so I broke it up and turned it in, used parts of it. So I'll send you the... The two songs that were complete. Interesting. You can kind of. I love seeing yeah. that stuff, man. I. It sounds like you got a lot still left over. Like I'm, I'm, I'm thinking like a little. Uh, throw out a little something, little like here's some of the demo tracks or the rough, the <laughs> rough tracks beforehand. People do it all the time, you know. Just throwing it out. Yeah. So Oak Two. Yeah. We go back a little bit to that gutter, throaty. Yeah. Vocal, balls out, hitting it hard. What can you tell me about Oak Two? So that was that was kind of how the song, w- with the exception of the drum intro, right? Which you've seen me been I've been using that intro for Strong Survive for yeah. the past probably two years. So uh, with <laughs> with that, <laughs> I turned. But that was the intro, and then I. I went right into it and I wanted to kind of go back to the sound of harsh conditions right on that track. And it's one of those things where then it just kind of takes a turn and slows down. And, uh, I'm almost talking and yeah. kind of like, it takes a drastic turn from, and that song is, is kind of weird. I don't even know. I think it's kind of a weird song, but I don't know if, if you felt like it flows because it's kind of like. You, do you think it feels patchy? I don't know. It just. It's, I don't think so. Kinda, okay. Cool. I, 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 you know, there, there, then there's times and we've. The, I don't even remember if it's on or off mic, whatever. But uh, you, you talk about those things. It's like just that. Like the roller coaster, the ebb and flow. It's like when things hit and I didn't. I didn't. I didn't feel any jerkiness. You know, every once okay. in a while, you you hear a song sometimes, and you're like, "Ooh, little like that." Just it came out of nowhere, but it wasn't like a good nowhere. It was just like, yeah. it just sounds real jerky for some reason. It was like piecemeal, but I didn't. I didn't get that at all. Cool, cool. I didn't get that at all. Um, it's fun. Dying, trying to live. This uh, I get this feeling of uh, well, time waits for no one here. What what can you tell me about it? That was that was definitely parts of the was kind of stemmed from lyrically from from Brett uh, passing right. and along with yeah I mean you hear I don't know you take something like sunscreen mm-hmm. okay uh, it can it can cause skin cancer if you use it you're fucking we're 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 <laughs> dying because we're trying to live because yeah we're fucking don't do this because it'll do this but totally but don't forget to do it. it's so yeah i mean going back to the 
the craziness of times right now. So, I mean, again, that's a small little, little thing, but it's, it's, it's just one of those things where, yeah, people are dying, just trying to go through life. But there's a part of that. This is, this is the thing. Um, you know, you look at some people, you talk to some people, and you, I think you can see it. Oh, you're just not getting it. And I'm not trying to be disrespectful to that person. It's like, I, I, I want to, I'm, think, I'm trying to think about how I'm thinking instead of just thinking. Yeah. It's a different vibe. And once you start realizing, yeah, and it's just, it could be the same thing with anything. It's like, well, I need to take a medication for this. Oh, well, it causes this. Don't worry, I got a pill for that. Well, that causes that. And the next thing, you, you're seven pills deep. Oh, yeah. You still haven't figured it out. And maybe it's something that you, you don't even know. Like, maybe there's uh, an asthmatic reaction because of the chemicals in the carpet that you just got. Who, can know, who knows anymore? But oh, yeah. when, you, when, you, when you talk to somebody like yourself and you're just questioning, like, I I'm not saying you're right. I'm not saying you're wrong. I'm just asking. Yeah. Just giving some questions. Let's figure it out together. Think about how we're thinking. And if you're on board with that, cool. If you're not, well, I'm probably just not going to talk that much to you. <laughs> so yeah. um, moments. Yes. We've got this spot where it's like, I feel like it's reflective. And... um Again, I, I wrote how to survive. Like, maybe this is how we survive, moment by moment, second by second, minute by yeah. minute. Even in recovery, it's like, this ain't year to year. It's oh, yeah. second to second sometimes, yeah. which I know everybody out there struggles at one point or another with something. Yeah. So what can you tell me about moments? So moments, what I felt like it was the best way to end the record, and I really wanted my grandma to be on this this one, like from the right. previous record. Yeah. And, uh, she's still alive and doing good, but she just, she pretty, the timing wasn't right for her and then the, the deadline of when the record needed to be completed. Right. And um, Matt was open. He was totally hyped on it when I had played him what she had done previously. And um, he was gonna. He had even said, "Yeah, just have Tanner, you know, record it." You know, him and Tanner have uh, they work well together. So he right. was like, "Yeah, just have Tanner uh, record your grandma and just send it over, and I'll put it in there, and we're all good." <laughs> so that, that was cool. But it just my grandma wasn't ready. But that song, I mean, it's it's basically these moments that we get, we have to take in. We don't have much time on this earth, so yeah. make of it for what it's worth. But I'm whispering it, which is was challenging, especially. I bet you know, and yeah. I've heard I heard that a few times in this release where you there's a lot of voice changes. Yeah, uh, a lot of soft, some soft stuff, some guttural, some I don't know, like not harmony harmonized, but like effect vocal. Yeah. Um, so you're you're everywhere with it, which is is very inviting. Thank you. I I wanted to I wanted to kind of show the progression and also hit on where it started from. Right. I kind of wanted to touch on everything. Right. You know. And I love personally when I listen to a band and and it's not a one trick pony, same song all the way through. I like those peaks and valleys. Me too. Twists and turns journey. And that's the thing. Yeah. Music should take you on a journey. The journey. And, uh, I mean, there's a reason why the song order is the way it is. It all ties in. It all, it does all tie. At least, you know, that was my plan. Which kind of brings me to a different tie in. We talked about this a little off mic. Now, uh, I, I thought it was years uh, years ago, but apparently it was very recent. That oh, and thank you by the way for explaining all this to me. I appreciate it. Oh yeah. Um, you did half marathon, or yeah, or uh, this was a half Ironman. Half so Ironman. I apologize. Half-Iron. Yeah, yeah. Well, so well. Th- this is what this is what brings me to this. Like, I listened to this album a couple times already, and. Uh, 
did you and did you like know that you were going to make one of the best workout albums? <laughs> I mean, it's like this is a perfect workout album. Oh. And I even get my time during calm. I get to sip my water. I get to, <laughs> and then go straight through again. And just nice. this is punishing stuff, and it, it really lends itself. Like I, it's one of the things that I, I look for sometimes, especially in the, in the genre. Can I train to it? Can I work out? And this is this reminded me as I was listening to it. Uh, listening to like old school, what I used to do. I used to be a power lifter. And just gear, gearing up for the lift, yeah. taking the salt, uh, the the smelling salts, getting that big whiff, getting the chalk up, getting that chalk cloud of dust, and then going and gripping it, and you know, and, uh, right as right yeah. as you're hitting the chorus, uh, the curse chorus, by the way. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about That's this awesome. Iron Man. So yeah, I. Uh been running shoot probably since i think since like 2011 2012 and i had done a i did a half marathon and then i had uh a couple years later did a full marathon and i always said to myself i'll never do a full marathon again unless i do a full iron man really yeah and so that was what uh, and so this year, or 2019, was uh, from late January to early May, I had recorded three records. You know, the, did the VIA record in late January, early February, then did the Source record in March, and then did the Surf Through Death record in May. Mm. And so my running had kind of slipped behind. And right. I, I, I have to do that just to you know, clear my head and uh, sure. push myself. And so I was like, fuck it. I'm going to, I'm going to sign up for something and then that'll hold me accountable. So it was, uh, it was December 8th in Indian Wells, California, which is, uh, well, only about four hours from here. India. It's just, it's in between Coachella and India. Okay. And uh, so it was a half Ironman, and it was it trained for it for 20 weeks. I didn't even really tell anybody because I wasn't sure if I was going to do it, to be honest. So okay. I didn't really, you know, even when Source was on tour, right? I, I missed, I was supposed to do like a two-hour run and a three-hour bike ride, and I didn't do it. So, mm. so I didn't. There was just no no time, no way to do it. Sure, sure. So I kind of just kept it to myself, and it was a personal goal, and so it was fun. Yeah, I went out there, wow. drove out there by myself, right? Did it, and uh, came drove back the same night. <laughs> wow, dude, you must have been exhausted. Like, I, explain it to me, because like, okay, so people know don't I'm a massage therapist, so I've I've been at uh, the end of a marathon. And I've seen what people look like. Their feet are cut up. There's, I don't, there's, there's certain body parts are bleeding yeah. that shouldn't. The chafing. Uh, yeah, the chafing. And, oh, it's just disgusting. Uh, ugh. Where, they, where they put, um, what, what was that stuff called? The body glide? Yeah. Put that giant chapstick between your legs? Another story. <laughs> but, um, so what were you feeling at the end of it? I mean, you can't be hyped. You got to be worn out and busted up and you know it by the way i i was supposed to get a free massage after that was part of the but i, yeah. I missed the cutoff because i was eating in an out burger that, <laughs> that was the no that was the post race if you finished the race you got free in and out there was well, the in and out food truck was there Ding, ding. This brings us right back to in and out and massage. Winner, so winner, chicken I dinner. I got done eating, and I fucking walked over there. And I'm like, yeah, I go, where, where do I sign up? And they go, oh, we're closed. I'm like, oh. Son of a bitch. So I was going to get a room there for another night, and I was like, it's four hours. I'm going to just drive home and sleep in my own bed. So, Jeez, you are like it, a workhorse. Believe it or not, the drive home was was pretty easy, and it we was still high, we still have uh, like adrenaline. Mm, not not so much. Or were you on adrenaline overdrive? Or yeah, it it's weird. It's like 
you lead up to it and you train for it and then it's it happens even though you know it was seven hours out there doing yeah it. And, no you click your it, fingers that's seven then, hours yeah. dude and uh yeah the this the swimming was pretty crazy because you're swimming in a lake with hundreds of other people so sure just when you get going you get kicked or hit Ugh. and so no it was fun i had a lot of fun with it so. okay so we got the run we got the swim and we got the bike. Yeah, so it starts out it's swim, bike, run in that order. Swim, bike, run. Okay. So you swim first and mm-hmm. it was it was I don't know if you're familiar with the distances. Yeah. But yeah, okay. So yeah, it was the one point two mile swim, followed by a fifty six mile bike ride, mm. and then and then a half marathon. So mm. 15. thirteen, yeah. But the run was probably the most brutal because it was it was a golf course, so there was rolling hills. Oh, beautiful. It was a six and a half or six point, whatever, mile loop. So you would you did it once, and then you had to do it. Yep. It's like, oh, I'm passing through. At least you know when you made your first time. And I, yeah. I don't know. I, I, I That's probably not. I, <laughs> look, the, like I said, I've said, the only thing that runs in my house is the fridge. I ain't running for <laughs> shit. But uh, I'm, I'm, thank you. That's, that's killer, man. Do you think you're going to, do you think you'll ever do a full? I hope to one day. Yeah. It's, yeah. I mean, that was, uh, but with stuff, it's like, with stuff like that, it's, it's hard. If I, if I think to myself, all right, I'm going to do it. I, I will try to do it. You know right. what I mean? But if, but if I'm, uh, it just kind of depends. I, but yeah, I hope to do one within the next like three, four years, but I'm definitely going to take a little time off cause that was a, because I've had clients that have done it, mm-hmm. and they're training like eight hours a day. Like, is that something you really want to do? Are we? Well, I, that's that shit ain't happening. I don't have that <laughs> yeah kind of time. And, I know. And, uh, I kind of I truthfully winged this one. Like, like I said, I how do you this. wing? Oh, look, <laughs> seriously, too, I'm I I I can't make any of those. Like. Forget all three. I can't make one of them. Like, how do you just wing that? Like, what what's that about? Is it something well, in drummer drummer world stamina that I'm not aware of? <laughs> what is that? It's just uh, yeah, just doing it. I don't know how you do it, brother. That you okay when you're when you're in the middle and you're is there a part where you're like yeah fuck this or does your does your does your spirit say there's no way I'm stopping because I don't want to let myself down? Like what what goes through your head? Because I never actually asked anybody that. Like you're running, I, I understand you're in swimming, you get kicked in the face, and you're like this sucks, whatever. You're cycling, you like you're in mile thirty. You got another twenty something miles to go. Like what's going through your head? In a weird way, and funny enough, the furthest ride I did on the training was 38 miles. So until that day, I hadn't, 38 miles was the most I'd ever ridden. This is insane. This this is an insane story. And and it's really no different in a weird way than going on a road trip. You know, you see the sign and you're like, fuck, I got 350 miles to LA. Right. What the fuck? And then you're just like, go and you stop. Yeah, but I'm not pedaling my car. (laughs) Like how, like seriously you just, you just though. watch those numbers dwindle and you just kind of keep going. Wow. I mean, do you, but you do get, you know, free bananas and gels and yip B. <laughs> Woo hoo. I'll go buy a banana at Trader Joe's. I'll be fine. <laughs> wow, man. I hats off. If I had a hat, I would take it off to you. Uh, <laughs> that is, thank you. With it, I, no, no, not doing it. I'm sorry. I, I appreciate it. You can go do it. Oh, all do do two, two for me if you could. Uh, I'd appreciate that. Uh, but uh, that takes some shit. I there's got to be something else in you. It can't just be like, eh, I'm just gonna watch it go by. It because it that that does take something out of you, doesn't it? Yeah, I mean, it's what's crazy. What I like about about running or triathlons. I mean, I've, I've only done, I did a, the lowest distance one. It's called the sprint. Right. I did that on, um, 
when I turned 40 in Flagstaff. And that was in five, another five years. Yeah. Or no, I, I did. No, that was, was, yeah, I had talking about that. uh, Yeah. Yeah. There you go. I had dent and I hadn't ridden. I put the bike away. Didn't touch the bike. Right. Oh, you'll appreciate this story. Yeah. So I did the bike ride, did the whole race out there on a, on a bike that I paid one hundred and seventy five dollars for. Oh jeez! Well, all right. What kind right. of bike? It was a Trek. It was a. Oh, the Trek's a, a, good. Aluminum Trek. I paid one hundred and seventy five. How Ford the fuck do you list. get a Trek for one hundred seventy five? It was just some guy just wanted to get it. rid of it. Yeah, wanted to get rid of it, so I bought it. But the bike that was racked next to me. Yeah. My buddy was like, "That's an eight thousand dollar bike." It was it like a Cannondale. It was a uh, Fuji. Or, yeah, I mean, and it it's. I'm not really in not How? really a true cyclist. You know, I yeah. don't really know all that and he was just cracking up and it's like it it doesn't matter if you have the no. the best music gear or the best bike. It's right. all just it's what, what you, you got. Do, what you got. You what know? uh how light is that your bike's gotta be light though. It's I mean it's aluminum. I don't know. It can't be heavy. But uh God I, I remember one of my one of my clients was telling me a story. He had a trek. Uh, I don't know, maybe paid two grand for it or whatever yeah. it was. And um, was it, uh, are they carbon fiber? The Somewhere? high end ones. Yeah. The higher end ones. Whatever one he had was yeah, carbon it fiber. It had to have been. And it's like broken apart. And he's like, and, and somebody saw it and, and it was in his garage. He said, what are you doing with that bike? He says, I'm just going to throw it out. I don't know. It's useless. He says, I'll buy it off you or I'll take it. And... Guy took it, and I guess there's some policy. Uh, don't hold me to it. That like, you send it in, and they there's a warranty for it. And he got a new, brand new track. <laughs> guy barely fit. <laughs> I mean, I think he gave my friend a couple hundred bucks. It's like I didn't want to screw you totally, but geez, man, it was like he could have got a whole brand new, brand new gig. Yeah. But that under two hundred bucks oh, yeah. for a bike. The funniest thing is, I paid more to do the race than I had in all my gear combined. So, so think of that. <laughs> what are they, what are they? Okay. How much, how, if you don't mind me asking, how much is so it? So it was, it was 400 to, to do it. Right. But I paid the extra $40 for the insurance if I got injured or wanted to cancel. Oh. I, and again, that's why I didn't really announce that I was even training for right. doing it. Cause I didn't know if it was going to actually happen. Sure. So yeah, it was four forty. Four hundred. Yeah. All right. Nobody's running for you. No. Nobody's cycling for you. What exactly? And I, I'm not trying to be, you know, like, but what, what, what's that money go towards? Like, just I don't know. What does it go for? What well, do you, they have to shut the street down. They have. Oh, to so it's all that bullshit. Down. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Which, and Fair that's enough. why, like, it was nice to do it out of town because I know that's a pain in the ass when. In the Tempe area, here. I didn't realize it was that expensive. I mean, I've yeah. I've done marathons and five Ks and ten Ks yeah. and stuff like that, and have marathons. Uh, saying do them, I was working at it, not running, of course. But yeah. Uh, yeah, and I always thought I was like, why are we paying? Why are you paying to be in a? Not that they should pay you, but you know, it's like let me run, just let me go. I guess it costs. And well, here's a question: you get some cool swag out of it, though. Like yeah. what? Did, okay, yeah. what did you get? Oh, uh, you get like a shirt. A- there was a dry, a dry sack backpack. Right, right. Um, Do you, you get, get you get a medal? Yeah, know. I was gonna say. Yeah, what's the medal like? Because there was one it's of my cool. friends does um, uh, Teresa. She does the uh, uh, like rock and roll uh-huh. marathon, and they had this cool ass guitar that like oh, yeah. moved and stuff. It was what? What, what was the? It was just a, a medal. It was La Quinta Indian Wells. Seven. Right, it was a pretty nice medal. Nice yeah. medal. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. All right. Metal. Metal. Yeah, horns up. <laughs> so uh, do, you, do you display it? Do you care? What do we have? Is it displayed in the house? Oh, in not really displayed. I have this little hook that I just hang them, hang them on, and it just, it's, it's up there kind of in, in near my closet. All right, right yeah. on. Yeah. Well, good. Yeah. Well, thanks for that, brother. Yeah. I appreciate that. So let's see. So we did uh, two interviews tonight. I'm sure we'll talk the hell out. We're... What? What? You, what? You want to talk a little bit about some jazz? Oh yeah! So yeah. off mic, uh, we're talking, 
And uh, Shane tells me that he's got this thing that he's been doing. And um, I'm, I'm really interested to hear the rest of the story. So since you're the dude, tell me yeah. about it. So when Brad had passed away, I was, you know, I mean, I was seeing, I was... I was try. I tried to get to him at least. I tried to take a lesson from him at least once a week or every other week, you know. And, right. And I mean, we saw each other a lot and got to know each other, and you know, sure. Just so when he passed away, I was like, "Well, I've always wanted to to learn jazz," and so uh, it was actually at his at his service, um, which, by the way, Dave Mustaine was at his service. Really? Because I don't know if I told you, Brett was the first Megadeth drummer. I did like, not know Like, that. we're talking, like, I mean... It, Infancy. Yeah, we're talking, like... Like, before Gar. Nothing, nothing really... I don't think he... When I say that, that's kind of a loose... Like, I don't think he ever played a show. But he was the... He was the... The impetus they, who started. Yeah, yeah. He, he's in Dave Mustaine's book, Brett is. Wow. They had a band called The Killers... Okay. Before, before the killers, yeah, yeah. As he grew up in Minnesota. Okay, and so yeah, if you want to, I mean, I'll send you the link to his website and check check some stuff out. And you, he has tons of videos on YouTube. I'll have to look. I, yeah. I did. I honestly, I looked up once. I I looked on the inside jacket for uh, distractions. I um, I saw his name and I went right over to YouTube. They had a night. There was a nice memorial. Yeah, I like that that yeah. memorial video. That was nice. And I gotta just turn this around on you, man. I, I want to say you, you do so much for the scene here. And the fact that you just, t that you, you, when you get a record, you, I can tell it means a lot to you and you, oh, yeah. you dissect it. And I mean, I would be very surprised if anyone put that much, you know, depth <laughs> and detail and even, you know, took the time to even look up, who he was. So that means a lot, man. And I, I, you've been busting your ass for. Well, thank you. Yeah. Um, you know, though, the thing is, if you put this on your record, there's got to be a reason. Yeah. I want to see, I want to know why. Yeah. Um, and if it's just, oh, he was just a friend. Oh, he was more than a friend to you. Yeah. Let's talk about it. And I don't know, there's something about that. It's like, I like, I like the little, I like the little things because. I know when somebody says something to me uh, about something I do in my my work or my business or something that somebody talks about from a podcast I did two years ago, I love hearing that. Yeah. And it's like, I can't believe that you picked that. And yeah. that, well, thank you. I and it, keep, thank it you. keeps you going. Yeah, it, it does. You're like, and that's, yeah. And one of, one of my favorite things with, with Brett was he he really broke me down to the bottom of the barrel and, right. and, and, and I'll never forget. He said this, my first lesson, he goes, all right, play, you know? And I'm like, so in my head, I'm like, well, all right. I'm like, what should I do? Right. You know? And so I just start playing and he goes, all right. And he goes, uh, you can, you can definitely hit the drums. He goes, but I'm going to, I'm going to teach you how to play the drums. There's a difference. Ooh. And, talk about that you know and then he'd give me something and there's a 10 year old kid in there reading it flawlessly Ugh. so i i it was humbling check your ego at the door it brother it was humbling and i mean it was funny cuz uh i had the hardest time we went through different sections of of music and genres and uh, are you familiar with what a shuffle is? Yeah. Like in drumming mm -hmm. like ZZ top. Yes. Fizzle. Yeah. So uh, I had the hardest time learning those hmm. and I could not grasp it. And in my head I was, I was driving to the lesson and I was like, I'm probably just going to quit today. Oh, shit. And, and so, and in my head, so, but I'm, I'm like, well, I'm already here. Mm -hmm. and so, that was the day that the shuffle finally clicked. And I told him that story. I said, I was going to, he goes, I, go, I was going to quit today. Wow. And he's like, and so that story carried on when another student came in, 
he would be like, yeah, this guy, he almost quit on me. He goes, thankfully he didn't because, you know, it's like it just took him a little longer to grasp the shuffle. Right. And I mean, I use him on some of the first source records. Yep. It's, it's interesting to, to listen back because that's when, about when I started taking the lessons because I had was doing Via for so long that I hadn't played full drums. Right. So he really... He really I like that. He, he took off... Like, it's you got a 50-year-old house with 12 coats of paint. He stripped it down. Yeah. All the way down. Well, even yeah. down, even past that, down to the studs. And, like, now we build it. Yeah. It, it, it almost sounds like... And uh, pardon for anybody that's been in the military, because I, I don't know the true ideal, but... I've heard it enough in, in uh, basic training. They break you down, and they tear you apart, and then the rebuilding process comes, yeah. and that's where people are made or, or not, and uh, that's what it sounds like. It really does. Yeah. No, it was, it was awesome. Um, one thing that was so, – so basically at, to get to where I'm at now, whereas with – at the service, I ran into one of his – other students i mean and his memorial was on a monday sure and it was standing room only i mean there was wow. probably four or five hundred people there because he taught drumline at two of the high schools over on the west side okay so he was a drumline teacher he had about 90 to 100 students mm. and uh i would drive he he was located off 35th avenue in greenway I would make that drive. Oh wow! We, you know, sometimes once a week. Yeah, you know, it depended on you know what I had going on in him, and there were certain times of the year where I couldn't afford the lesson. So you know, he he really really worked with me. But um, when he when he had passed, I ran into a student and who I had kind of made friends with over the years, and um, he goes, "What are you going to do?" I said, "I don't know." I go, "I know." always wanted to learn jazz and he made a recommendation for a jazz teacher right and uh so i think i took the first jazz lesson in march and um so every other saturday at asu the the jazz teacher there uh his name's dom moyo right jazz is no joke i mean (laughs) no it isn't i mean and what's interesting is these are guys wearing drummers and other players, but you think of a drummer, you see the amount of sweat that comes out of yeah out of uh, drummers. Oh yeah, uh, these guys are in suits playing <laughs> way faster, <laughs> right? And not even breaking a sweat. True, it's all technique, and and uh, so this has been very humbling. Is this like? Are you getting into a, a space like, say, like Buddy Rich style, kind of like that, or uh, like who? What, I mean, what do you? He's the what greatest do you, drummer to ever. <laughs> well, you know, I mean, yeah, shit, I'll go right yeah, at the top, you know. Yeah. No, but like, what is? Uh, are you getting inspired by anybody currently? Well, I mean, I've always been a fan of jazz. I've always been intrigued by it. Okay. Even uh, a few years ago, my wife and I went to a. Uh, I don't know if you've ever been to the Nash downtown. No. So it's a it's a jazz club. Okay. It's kind of by where uh, Revolver Records downtown used to be. But uh, my wife and I went to this. It was an Art Blakey tribute. Okay. And uh, we were the youngest people there. <laughs> and, uh, and it, I love and, shit like and that. It was though. probably one of the most. Ex- Expensive tickets I had bought in a while. Really? Uh, yeah, but it was badass, and um, and so I've always been intrigued by it. But so now I'm learning it, and thankfully Brett taught me how to read because that's playing a big role. Absolutely. In, in learning the jazz. When 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 you go back, do you think about yourself as a kid, and you're like, why didn't I learn how to read years ago? Well, yeah, I mean, I was touching on that in the last yeah surf. I. I'm a late bloomer with drums. I, yeah. I never played in high school. I never was in marching band. I, I kind of taught, I was a self-taught drummer that developed some bad habits mm-hmm. and Brett broke me of them, you know, wow. but I was able to take 
some of the bad habits and still keep them in a way. Sure. You it know? gives you that's f- what it give, gives you your flair. Yeah. So that's all, that's it. Have you ever seen um I, I didn't know this until I, I don't know whether somebody brought it up. I, I, I picked up the uh I I watched it on YouTube. Um Sammy Davis Jr. playing the drums. Fucking killer looking man. Oh, I was yeah, like yeah. he he ripped. Yeah. He ripped it. And I was like Huh? I never. I I had no idea. I had no clue. I didn't know. I you know. Uh, I, I knew he was a talent. I didn't know that talented. You know, like it doesn't matter whether it's whether it's somebody like him or even uh, somebody like Dolly Parton. She does everything, yeah. everything, and crushes it with a smile on her face. Yep. And meanwhile, people are like. You know, uh, Grexon and and you know Klon to just get some good guitar notes out, and she does she does everything. It, it's it's crazy, yeah. and all these all these people that like, I don't know, some people would make fun of, I guess. Or it's Dolly Parton, or even like Charo back in the seventies. <laughs> she does everything, uh, and you know, I, I see that every once in a while with those. I don't know what you call them, Vegasy. Yeah. show people or whatever but it's it, there's a talent there there's something there this was pretty cool because a lot of working with doing the lessons with dom is just i mean he he's been playing drums over 50 years he's right been teaching at asu on and off for like 30 jeez you know, he's 67 and i mean he plays three four gigs a week the guys it and uh he was telling me a story when he was younger, his band opened for Buddy Rich. Ooh. So talk about. Like, <laughs> no pressure. <yeah. laughs> and he said he got a little head nod and a little like compliment from him. And he's all, I'll take it. That's, that's, that's all I need. <laughs> and I mean, yeah, I'm having a blast with it. It's just, I, I, I kind of only take, take maybe one, maybe two a month, you know, just, okay. but the different these are true one on one lessons. Right. Where we he has two drum sets. Yeah. And I had never done that like this. It's called trading twos or trading fours. Where, okay. Where two drummers lock in mm-hmm. and then one keeps it going and the other one solos. Okay. And then you meet back up. Interesting. And it's kinda like in a weird way, it's kinda like playing pig or horse in basketball. Yeah. You know? With this, it's like we're going and he'll start off. I'm like, all right, cool. Right, and then I'll do something. He'll look at me and smile and go. <laughs> <laughs> he'll play the whole play, <laughs> play the whole he'll set. Just, he'll just crush it, and it, it's 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 awesome. So I, I love learning and the challenge, and I, I think that's the thing. Even with the half Iron Man and all that, right? I like pushing myself. And, uh, and gee, you think? <laughs> you think? All right, Keeps so me going. You know, you, you know, I know. I I I've known you for a bit. I, I only know you to be a humble man. And when I see like, let's see, so there's three releases in the same year, a half a Iron Man, learning jazz, keeping a business running, a full time business, dude, you're just you're on point, man. You're on point. And you know, I don't know what 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 you're doing right. It's probably all the clean eating, I'm guessing, and you know. Taking your vitamins or whatever. Oh, it's but, not clean eating. You saw what we just did. Well, you know what? Everybody needs a little <laughs> indulgence. Uh, unfortunately, I indulge in that too much. But but no, man. But you, you just, you're doing it. And, uh, you know, um, just on, on, a, on a final note, I, I just wanted to say thank you. Because uh, thank you for being a, a great human, a good friend, and uh, just being yourself so supportive in helping me in doing what I do. And... Uh, what I also see is what you do outside of uh, playing. You're always willing to give somebody a, a, a greeting, a hello, a how you doing. doesn't matter if you're loading in, taking it, whatever it is. You're always just a gracious human being, and I love that about you, brother. Thank you, brother. Uh, that, and that ties into the moments. Yeah. We never know when our time's up. We don't. And we that don't. really really hit hard with with brett is like i mean i'll never forget it woke up i found out about his passing through facebook through his wife yeah facebook and 
woke up and and I was like, that's how I found out, you know. And it's like so. Though anyway, it's those moments that you know you never know when you're gonna see someone again or if you're gonna see someone again, you know. And uh, so true. So life's a trip. It is, well, and I think we uh, have music. At least we have music. And on that, I think we'll end it. I think yeah. we'll uh, dedicate uh, this podcast episode to Brett. Brett Fredrickson. Cheers to Brett Fredrickson. Wherever you are, rest in power, brother. Yep. We're out of here. It's time to go into a track. This is one of the latest of distractions from the truth. This is Haunt. <laughs> be putting up the episode with the band Source because of their new release, The Arc Burner, and they're just a great bunch of guys to talk to. And if you didn't know, Shane is also in that band. But afterwards, we did a little bit of extra with Shane, and we talked about a few other things, and we titled this Afterthoughts with Via Vengeance. Enjoy, won't you? So much, man. I can't believe, like, uh, you know, I, um, I'm just going to start. We got, we got, so this is a little addendum. Uh, did the interview with uh, Shane from Via Vengeance, and um, right now we're in the rehearsal space for Source. And uh, do, you, do you practice here for Via? Like, you just come in here? Yeah. Yeah, I'll usually, especially when I was uh, writing the last record, I, I would just basically. 
uh, stay late. So it'd, it'd be like right now I would set up for via. Right. And then just, and just go know, for it, leave it set up until the, the next source practice. Cause sure. it is, it does take, if you look behind the kit, yeah, that's the via stuff. It does take some time to, to tear down the kit and do the via setup. How does that work? I see some of the, you got some cutouts. What is, oh. so how, is that just so it doesn't split or the, the symbols? Oh, on my... On the symbols, I see it. There's the splits. Oh, you got so... The, okay, so here, hop up. Yeah, yeah. All right, we're going we're gonna to have a tour here. So these are my rehearsal symbol, symbols. Okay. See how they're all cracked? Yes, they are. So what happens is... Yes, I'm looking. So we got this one. We got that. Oh, like, that's... Ooh. Like this will be the... Right, uh, the symbol I use at the show next week. Okay, was that? So did you cut that? I ha- I cracked this on tour. Okay, and then when I got back, uh, Milano Music will cut this out. So feel how smooth that is. Nice. Yes. So there's drummers that'll take wire snips and just kind of it basically looks like that. Yeah, just know? click it. Yeah, yeah. But uh, it's twelve dollars, and they do a great job. And it basically it stops the crack. From continuing to go. So if we're going to get, if, so uh, a symbol like that, that Zildjian. Yeah. So how much is that, would that normally set you back? It's about 280 And how much is it to cut that piece out? $12. And Sounds, they, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Whereas like that is past the point of no return. So right. I just beat on that when mm-hmm. you're rehearsing. And I have a whole set of symbols that I use for shows. Just for shows, yeah. Versus, yeah. So, huh. Yeah. Wow, two hundred and eighty bucks for that. Just, hmm. just I, that one, yeah. You know, I just saw at the uh, at the Nam convention there was, uh, I guess, a guy from Zildjian, and he he was in like this almost like soundproof booth and like hammering it out. And I, I've, I mean, I, I have never been to a Nam. Have you ever gone to a Nam show? I've never gone. No. I, I want to see what it's about. I mean, I know, you know, it's 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 weird because you're going through this space and you just you don't know who you're going to run into or where. And I, I think I'd be wide-eyed going around just looking at, like, I'm starstruck by this person, by this person. I don't know who to, who to if I ever want to talk to anybody or just, like, yeah. just like let them do their thing. And, and you know, it's, it's – but it's it looked like a – it's a monster event. It is. And uh, speaking of uh, – remember we were talking about Brett Fredrickson? Yeah, my yeah. My old drum teacher. Uh, there's a video of him probably on that – video you watched on youtube yep. did you see him playing it was a cymbal drum set i did see i did see i don't know if it was that uh that memorial or another another youtube video yeah yeah so that was at the nam show uh i th- want to say that was like 2016 or 17 so because he was endorsed by zildjian vic firth right yeah aquarian so he he went he got to go there and uh, he played that. It was a cymbal drum set, whereas right. it, it's basically fifteen cymbals. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's huge. <laughs> and maybe, cool. who knows? Maybe, uh, maybe Via can get a, a sponsorship, possibly by, uh, by somebody. We got to throw it out there. That would be nice. But I, I know I, we've, I, d- we've done it on the podcast before, so say it again. Uh, Shane, Via Vengeance, uh, Zildjian. Uh, yeah, I know you're listening. So if you get the chance, um, throw a few symbols his way. Um, so maybe he'll get rid of these and then, and then uh, have the other ones on that, he, that he has on for the regular shows, too. That would be awesome, wouldn't it? That would. I will say, though, I don't break or crack symbols nearly as much as I used to. And uh, What's with, the difference? Well, there's, there's a way that you, that you strike it. You don't chop wood. You you bow it there's a finesse to it yeah, yeah um who was i talking to uh oh the drummer for yatra when i saw yatra live um i didn't get to, d- to do the interview i i have the questions ready and i know they have a new release coming out on stb records and uh i was going to um ask them maybe do a phone interview or something and i think they're going to be coming around sometime soon again um but i saw him as he was hitting he wasn't striking down. Mm-hmm. He was swinging. It almost it almost looked jazzy. Yeah, and it bring it brings the the sound out more too. Really, it doesn't bury it. Yeah. So okay. there's Yeah. So so, so the, one of the reasons uh, we we wanted to sit down again was just why to go over a few quick things. 
And uh, one of them uh, was, you, you were talking about the, uh, what was it, the New England? Yeah. 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 The, Tell me about that. The New England Doomfest. Here, let me pull up because right. I, I got a list here. Yeah, yeah. So. Dun, 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 dun. Dun, dun, dun. So yeah, it's the New England Stoner and Doom Festival. Yeah. And it is happening in May. Let me get you the exact dates. Looks like it's going to be Thursday, May 14th, and Friday. Or it's Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. It's four so, days of yeah, doom. Yeah, it's the May, May 14th through May 17th. Right. And uh, it's... It's going to be a good time. Uh, are you on, are you on the bill? Yeah, it looks like uh, so. Atala and my and Via Vengeance are on it, and then uh, Red Mesa. Yeah, is, they, they're they're already announced on it. They're they're waiting to. They're kind of they're not announcing it all right now. They're kind of like right continuing it. So, I mean, I can run you through some of the bands that are on there. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so. Uh, Friday night's headliner is Warrior Soul. Warrior, really? Yeah, and they're so- no, the the from the original Warrior Soul celebrating the thirtieth anniversary of their debut. Last Whoa, decade, Death I Century. saw Warrior Soul way way yeah. back. Holy shit, that re- that brings back some memories. So so that's the Friday night headliner, and then the Saturday night headliner is Tyrant. Mm, another and, powerhouse. Yeah, and then. Uh, what do we got on Sunday or so wait, Thursday? I, yeah, it's it's not really it's not solidified yet. Yeah, all right. So still, but you know, uh, speaking of Yatra, 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 yeah, they're they're on there. Curse the Sun, High Reaper, King Snake, Clown High Reaper is going to be coming down, coming around here. He Wolf, yeah. Uh, let's see, Bone Church, Heavy Temple, Red Ooh. Mesa. Afghan Haze, Gray Skies Fallen, Worshipper, oh. Wolf Tooth, oh. Church Burn. Have you have you seen um, have you seen Worshipper live yet? No. They play. They came out here. Killer, Killer set. The new album. Uh, well, it's been out for a little bit right now. Just destroys and um, Wolf Tooth. I cannot wait for some new material. I don't know if you've ever uh, heard of them or seen them. It's uh, there's you know there's a piece of throwback to some like just straight up heavy rock, but nice. they bring their own element to it. And I think when I saw them, they might have played like their fifth or sixth live show. Oh, They've wow. been around for a bit uh, in in various other bands and such. And I cannot wait for new material. That first release, it just um, it was actually one of the bands uh, aside from uh, some of the local bands here. It was one of the bands that kind of solidified. Like, I really want to interview people of this genre. It was yeah. it's, it was that good. That's awesome. Yeah. So don't miss Wolf Tooth. Man. Oh yeah, they'll yeah. crush it. And then it looks like uh, Redstone Chapel is from Germany. They're playing right. Uh, Shadow Witch. So oh, this. Shadow Witch. They. I wonder. Uh, last time I saw Shadow Witch, there. It's interesting. Uh, the, the lead singer sometimes is, doesn't wear shoes. I think. Okay. And uh, last time I saw them, they did an all black light show. So they had like uh, this like different getup, and uh, it, it it got affected with the with the black light. That was something unique. You don't really see that yeah. a lot. It's somebody doing that little something extra on stage that uh, that kind of makes it worthwhile. So yeah. All right. So um, what else did we leave off? Uh, what else did we leave out? Well, we do have the question. Yes. <laughs> it's important. Now, uh, for Surf Through Death, uh, we had a question, and uh, I went through that. And uh, uh, it's funny. I, I have, I, I, you know, when I interviewed Javier from Alpaca, I, I know I asked him one of the other questions. I don't know if I asked the toilet paper question, but we'll, I'll get well, to that. Can I show you something real quick, speaking of toilet paper? Uh-oh. Uh, I mean, I guess so. Uh, <laughs> uh, am I going to get weirded out? Is it... Uh, what do we got? Hold on. Wait, wait, wait. What do we got? What is this? Beards are cool. <laughs> and then the- that is brilliant. Oh, my God. I got to. Yeah, I, I need that picture. I, I definitely need that picture. Um, we'll explain so, it later. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, so, okay. So, you do you have a question for me to ask 
from this is a via vengeance question, by the way, to ask the next band I interview. Yeah, I mean, I'm. We were talking about vinyl earlier, so uh, one thing. What was? Uh, did, are you allowed to announce the band, or is this just a, a Passover that the the band that that is going to be uh, asked this question? I don't know who it is yet. Okay, so what was the first vinyl record each member purchased? I love it. I love it. This it's it's pure and succinct. Yeah. You know, I love this. I I, I got to tell you, man. It's like we discussed it a little bit, uh, you know, previously. But um, yeah, I, I don't know, man. I'm getting getting kind of addicted. <laughs> it is as if we don't have enough expensive. Uh, I know, right? <laughs> and I've actually went in my house and and uh, decluttered more and gotten rid of more stuff. And it's not necessarily so I can have space. It's so I can have a little more space for some more vinyl. Yeah. I yeah. I basically start my morning every morning. First thing I do is make a pot of coffee and then right. put on a record. So I, I really enjoy starting my day with, you know, one, two, or possibly three records, depending on how early I get up, and then uh throwing on CDs on my drive to work. Sure. And then listening to, you know, my iTunes uh with that are usually my digital downloads from the vinyl purchases. Exactly. So I'm covering you know, all Every different, base. all different bases. So it's, it's really cool. Um, what's, I don't, I don't remember if we asked, uh, coffee of choice. So, I mean, I stock up and I just basically buy Costco Kirkland coffee. Okay. And, fair and enough. I, yeah. But I mean, that's when I'm, when I treat myself, uh, sometimes I'll, I'll do like cartel mm-hmm. cartels. Good. Uh, I'm still a death know. wish coffee. Sucker. Death wish is good. Yeah, I love it. I actually yeah. have uh, a a uh, uh, not a pin. Well, they send me pins, but I have a, a coin from the uh, Strong Coffee Guild or something. Oh, <laughs> it's nice. like it just says that I'm a, I'm a member of the Lovers of Strong Coffee. It's ridiculous, but of course it means something to me. Um, but you know, one thing that I I, I don't know if you ever tried. Uh, you go to Trader Joe's. Yeah. Know. Trader Joe's has some really great coffee of their brand. Really? Delicious. And because I didn't know, you know, it's, it honestly, it's a little cheaper. So I'm like, okay. I don't know if I'm going to get a good, you yeah. know, whatever. But it'll be something until my, my next Death Wish uh, shipment comes in. And um, I decided I was going to make cold brew. So yeah. I just used half of it. And I threw it in a uh, half gallon, wait a few days, strain it. I got to tell you, incredible, incredible. The French roast, oh, fantastic. Not too expensive. Okay. So if you get a chance yeah. and if you're a coffee connoisseur. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, there's uh, basically with with coffee, I don't, I just drink it black. Um, right. So no sweetener? No. Just, really straight yeah, up? Just straight up black. Yeah. And you know, there's a, there's a- Motor oil. But there's a beauty to that because you get the notes if you are a fan and yeah. not necessarily gulping it, sipping it, not completely hot, a little less. So you get that little cherry, you get oh, that yeah. hazelnut or whatever, and you can you can get it. And it's, oh, I, you know, <laughs> I've tried different ways because uh, um, I haven't bought a Chemex yet, which is uh, that glass yeah. thing, you, you know, pour over. But I do have a pour over method. I have what's called a Churia door, and it looks like a big sock. And you, you you put the coffee in there loosely. You don't pack it tight. And it's got like this little, uh, um, this wooden structure that it lays in. And then you put the cup underneath and you do the slow pour over method. So yeah. it doesn't stay, it doesn't like get overheated or something. I forget. It does something with the acid content too. But either way, it comes out wonderful. And I think the um, the background was maybe cowboys used it because oh, yeah. they didn't have pots you know or, sto- or stove top or whatever yeah so they just grabbed this it was, who knows they probably grabbed a grungy old dirty cowboy <laughs> sock it's been in a boot for a week yeah uh, on the on the on the dusty plane and the uh, filter <laughs> oh oh i can't imagine what oh it's, it's got to be the worst i saw one time on a uh, jackass that i guess somebody was sweating or something and they wrung it out and somebody drank that oh uh, yeah i don't i i 
gagging. Yep. Just, ugh. No thanks. <laughs> Horrific. So other than uh, New England, do you have, um, I know... I know, obviously, we, we have you at Planet Mammoth. Yeah. Uh, are there any other uh, shows that VIA has? So, yeah, I'm possibly doing uh, a handful of Pacific Northwest states. Awesome. Uh, yeah, and I'll probably fly in, and then I'm still kind of working that out. I'm trying to figure that out, but probably do, like, uh, fly into Portland, do, like, Portland, Seattle, Bellingham, and possibly Vancouver. Do you need so, to? Do you need to have a like a? I don't know. Is it, was it, is it called a, like a drum back line? So what I do is, uh, it's like I've figured out my the main things I need when when I went to Europe last year. And right. So it's pretty cool because I can fly with my head, my guitar, mm-hmm. and my cymbals and my and my pedals and my snare. So it's like, I, I have it dialed down to where, you know, I can basically the plane ticket plus about 50 to a hundred, uh, in checking gear. Right. And then, uh, you know, all That's I done. all I need to borrow is like a bass drum and a floor Tom and your set and, and like a guitar cabinet. And wow. So it's pretty nice. Bare bones. Yeah. So I'm working that out now. It's, there's some stuff in the works, but, uh, yeah, probably, Within the next like two, three, four months. Awesome. Well, you yeah. hear that? You heard that? West Coast, Pacific Northwest. We got somebody coming at you, and yeah. it's going to be via vengeance. Shane, thanks so much for uh, hanging out for this. What do, what do we want to call this? The after party? The, yeah. The annex? The, the afterthoughts. The, 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 uh, yes, afterthoughts with Shane yes. from Via Vengeance. Sir. And rest in peace. Yes. Neil. Yeah, Neil. Yeah. I know, man. I, it's just, uh, I saw all the postings and just like, man, that hit, that hit hard. I've, you know, I, I gosh, man, it brings me back like when everything happened with Nirvana and Kurt Cobain, there were people that were just devastated, devastated. I'm not going to lie. I, I was upset, but I didn't feel it like other people did. Yeah. The Neil thing caught me, man. Let's just like, I was talking with Jonathan beforehand. I saw he has a, an EVH pedal. I'm like, you know, and I've, I've heard some of the stories about Eddie and I don't know, man. I, I, you know, we're getting to that point where people we looked up to, they're, they're winding down, man. And who knows? I, I I don't know. So it, it, it is kind of a testament in a way to like, If there is a band that you want to see and music means something to you, go to the show. One of my great regrets is I I saw Guar was coming around in Florida and I said, well, you know, they make their yearly jaunt. I'll see him next year. Eh, Dave Brocky dies. You know, I did the same thing. Stevie Ray Vaughan, one of my friends, was a great, uh, like a huge fan of him, and he says, yeah, you got to go see him. I said, you know, I mean, I like it, and I'll see it the next time. Nah. Well, it didn't happen. If you yeah. get the chance, go to the shows, because you never know. You just talked about, was it was the band named Father Figures? Oh, uh, yeah, I was uh, talking about the uh, band called Death Eyes, who played here uh, maybe about a month ago. Right. And... Uh, I just saw today online that the the singer had passed away. Oh, it was, it was it, a singer it was, for it that was the, for it them. Was a singer for that band, but where what had happened is when that when Death Eyes came here, my bandmate from the very first band I was in sent me a text and said, "Hey, his band, the Father Figures, couldn't play the show, so he asked if if we if we me and the other guy Trent. Um, I don't know if we were, have we ever talked about Hillbilly Devil Speak." I think we we did oh, on the first okay. one. So yeah. is it was that your first band? Yeah, it was the first band here, yeah. No and kidding. so we actually we haven't even played or seen each other in a year, which is that's how this pro, that project works. It's right. it's always there and we just kind of So he had he had said, "Hey, uh Father Figures can't play tonight. Uh would you guys want to just show up and play, do a hillbilly set?" And I was out of town, so we didn't, but it, it 
where I'm going with it, 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 it was that band wow. that was here. They played at the Lunchbox, and uh, they were. I, I just, I mean, I just started following that band on Instagram maybe about oh, two months ago because Big Business had posted that they were go- taking that band on tour with them. Right. So like that's how it. So I've been following them, but so I just saw that today and uh, to the uh, to the Rush. But did you ever get to see Rush? Yeah. Okay. I did. Did you uh, see him in 15 for the 40th? No, I didn't. Wait. Was that the one with the washing machines? I mean, it was about four or five years ago. It might at, have been. At, uh, I know they had like washing machines on stage and they were just kept. I don't know. I don't understand what the process was, but I was like, okay, whatever. <laughs> um, no, I think the. F- I mean, the first time I saw him. Uh, what was the was it? Is it Power Windows? Was that what was the what was that tour? Uh, but, 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 with uh, the song uh, "Big Money," you know, "Big Money Goes Around the World." Uh, I think it's. I think that was. I mean, I think it was. I think that was the album before. Before <clears throat> I did, I I only got to see him once, and it was right. It was for their fortieth. It's it's funny because it's it, you know it would be a sea of mostly 40 plus year old men uh and it, you can't shake a stick without hitting some guy that's wearing a zildjian <laughs> t-shirt <laughs> or a peisty or however you oh, pronounce yeah. it t- uh, a t-shirt or something uh, a lot of drum heads and uh wow. i just saw this incredible overhead shot of his kit recently as just i'm, I'm a sucker for uh, uh seeing like 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 this set you have here it's a nice crisp clean looking set and um i don't know i'm a sucker for uh, i guess i guess i'm just like one of those guys that, like just give me a shiny object i'm happy yeah and that's exactly what it is <laughs> so uh dude thank you so much thank you i appreciate you hanging for uh the after party yes. uh, with via vengeance coming to a town near you thanks brother thank you doom tomb podcast gmail.com is how to reach us Follow us on social media wherever you can. Don't forget, I have a show, craniumradio.com. It is on Sunday afternoons, 6 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. All things stoner, doom, sludge, psych. Uh, Just, you know, I I mix it up. You never know what's going to happen. Uh, might even put something else on. If you get in the chat room at craniumradio.com and make a request, you damn sure if I have it, I'm going to play it. Also, it's getting near Planet Mammoth 2020 Yucca Tap Room, February 21st through 23rd. I just ordered some more posters, some more merchandise will be coming in soon. And we have got, well, never mind. I'm not, you know what? I'm going to save it. I got to save something for you to be wowed by when you come and see this show. This is not going to be an ordinary show. Nothing like you've ever seen at Yucca Tap Room before. I guarantee it. Get your tickets. You're, you'll just be fucking blown away by this. It'll be a great time. Thanks, everybody. We'll talk to you soon. Next up is the band Source. Oh, yeah. And don't forget, keep going to those shows, enjoy yourselves, buy some of that band merch, and don't forget to stay heavy.